everyone welcome back to the channel and a new video on the last van that we bought from that probate sale the other vans were a really big success this one it was i wasn't sure about it a welfare unit not something i've had before not something chris has had before but you guys response to it was amazing we don't know the history of these vans they were sat around for quite some time as you know this one in particular, I MOT'd it up in Wolverhampton so that I could drive it home. Like I say, it didn't come with any history, just a logbook. So we don't know when it was last serviced. We don't know when it was last went through. Fortunately for us, we've been very lucky again and teamed up with Comline to actually do the service items on this vehicle. For those of you guys that don't know who Comline are, guys, Comline supplier affordable quality parts to the trade so you can go into your motor factors and purchase comline items so today we're going to be changing on this vehicle oil filter fuel filter air filter and most important of all is the cabin filter the cabin filter protects the occupants of the vehicle so we're going to move on get all of that fitted and actually smarten this van up. Guys, I want to say a huge thank you again to Comline for their continued support. I'm going to put all of their links in the description down below, in particular their social media accounts, where quite often they do do giveaways. So head over to their social media and check them out. Just whipped out there to grab some supplies and Chris made really light work of it. What'd you do, mate? Oil filter, um, drain the oil. It was actually, hasn't been done for quite some time, has it? And also, Chris was just looking at the diesel filter and you can see there, guys, I mean, you wouldn't like to put a time on that, would you? But well, it's been changed for a long time. That's a long, long time, like many years, that has not been changed. But we just realised we got no diesel. And when you are fitting a diesel filter on a vehicle, I know quite, obviously I appreciate quite a lot of you do already know this, but some people don't. You must backfill that diesel filter before you put it back on. Otherwise, you're just going to keep cranking and cranking and cranking. It's going to be full of air until it gets the diesel round. It's just going to push air everywhere. So just really does help. Fill it up with oil. Get it... Uh, oil fill it up with diesel get it in there lock it home and then it should fire up and pull through that little bit of air that it has got but yeah so far so good i've just filled it all up with oil it's right on the maximum chris to go and grab some diesel we get that swapped out and that's the service side of it done sorry guys i got ahead of myself there and said chris had done the air filter oil filter and oil he hadn't done the air filter and i've just pulled that off to actually do it and there's the new one and there's the old one so not as bad as a diesel filter, but definitely, definitely needed doing. We get that one clip back in there. Quite easy to do. You just got those two little forks on the back that sit in those two little forks on the airbox. And then two little clips just at the front. So very, very straightforward to do. So mechanically, guys, we're over the moon with it. Swiss watch. They are quite loud, the old transits, but diesel filters on there, air filter, new oil, new filters perfect now we're going to pull it outside and actually attempt to clean this up a bit so in the paint you can see let me actually turn this off i know sometimes it's a little bit too loud it sounds seems like i'm shouting but you can see there's actually a bit of a phone number here somebody has had a go at it before and there's a couple of scratches in there there's loads of little actually they're my greasy handprints but there's loads of marks around it and you can see there's a Union Jack here, and someone actually reached out in the last video and said, oh, I worked for that company, and they said the name of it, and they was absolutely bang on. I can't actually see what that does say there, but I don't know what the first... G-A-R-I-C, Garrick, with a Union Jack. And then you can also see up there, on hire from w.garrick.co.uk, and also down here, 
you can probably just yeah you can see that now in the shade there's a mobile phone number on there so quite a lot of work to get that cleaned up bit undecided about that welfare unit should we leave that on there i don't know we'll decide once we start cleaning it but once i run the polisher over that it's probably going to mark this so we may have to take it off on the back again i'm not going to touch any of that it's a shame about that bit there highway maintenance i'm wondering whether that's separate i think it is i'll speak to chris in a minute and possibly we'll get that off as well and then down this side it's pretty much exactly the same so let's pull it outside first i'm going to make a right mess with the polish also i have ordered a new bucket for this because the clip in there is actually broke the flap itself is fine so hopefully that turns up in this video i'll wait till chris comes back in we'll get it outside and give it a nice polish and try and get it up quite nice because i think this is going to be a nice van especially when we get a bit of bumper gel on that bumper and clean all that up i'm just going to get prepped and ready guys to actually hit this with the mop did have a chat with chris about that and he agreed with me completely once we start mopping all this you're going to try and avoid it and it's going to end up with loads of little patches so unfortunately we are going to have to remove that i'll get that off and we'll crack on with the side of it Guys, it's actually shocking me how nice this is coming up. I think we're going to have to do something with the seals, but for the most part, the actual panels are coming up really, really nice. You can see I've done that wing and that door. They haven't yet been cleaned, so they've still got quite a lot of polished residue on them. But look at the difference in that to that already. It just does make so much of a big difference. Also, everything that I'm going to be using today I know I always forget, and I did say in the last couple of videos, I'm going to keep trying to remember. I will link all of the products used in the description down below. So quite a lot of people asked about this new battery, Sealy Mop. Chris actually got me this for my birthday early this year. And I don't know how we've survived without it. We used to use the electric one. Quite a lot of you would always pick me up on the fact that I was dragging a cable round behind me in the water. So this is fantastic. Anyway, I'm going to carry on, get this side done and then we'll have a proper look at it. But I will link everything in the description down below. but we are making light work of it while i'm mopping it chris is just going around getting rid of all the residue he's got the g101 out just to go over the white plastics well we've said it before the little <coughs> excuse me the little white dots i do seem to get quite a lot of them i probably do use a bit too much water or polish we have seen the paint guys do it and they just don't make any mess at all so I'm going to continue on. I've done the front there, done all this side. Chris is rinsing it down. I'm going to move on to the other side. You're finished with that ladder now, mate, aren't you? So I was just waiting for the ladder, and I'll continue on and get the other side done. But a huge, huge difference. And we're going to go over it with that. What's that other pad called, Chris? Like lamb's wall. Like lamb's wall pad. We go over it after, and it will get the rest of those little polish marks off and the bits of polish that are left on there. But so far, so good. actually a part that ever gets seen on a van but guys look at it it is terrible you can see it's never been cleaned 
So I've just started at this little patch at the back. Chris is standing here, foot in the ladder, and I'm just gonna clean the back. I've got my drying cloth, dry it, and work my way forward. It's just gonna make all the difference, but I can't wait to get down and show you how nicely this has turned out because it really has come up very, very nice. There's quite a lot of grime underneath this light that I need to get to, and this light was quite dirty as well, but seems to be cleaning up pretty nice. So really, really moving along with it. So guys, we are gonna do something with the seals, but check that out. Honest, I mean, we didn't, we didn't go crazy. It's probably took a couple of hours. I've run over the whole thing with a polisher. All these little bits, we are gonna touch up. And as a rule, normally we don't do under the bonnet, but this was quite dirty. And all of that brake fluid that leaked out of that pipe when I picked it up was all over that chassis leg. So I've given that a good wipe down, a good wash down under there and just sprayed a bit of contact cleaner all over the electrics. Well, you can see I pretty much went crazy with it just to make sure that nothing got wet. Right down this side, again, all come up really, really nice. Still waiting on that bucket to arrive that goes inside there so that we can clip that up. And Chris is gonna have a good go at them seals. Also the wheels, I mean, they're quite bad. These two in particular are probably the better ones, but if you look the other side, oh, actually, sorry, they're the two better ones. So that's not too bad, nor is that one, but the other two are quite bad. So what I've done was rung the wheel refurb guy down the road. So we use smarts for the real expensive alley wheels that need work but for trade vehicles like this there is a guy down the road who does a really good job but reasonable so the difference is when we take them to like the likes of smarts they'll dip them in acid then they'll powder coat them and they'll all be done original factory with things like this the trade ones they're actually cleaned all the rust is removed using hand tools and normal tools and then they actually paint them so they're not powder coated but they still look really nice and they last quite a long time as well so why chris is just he's actually got people here at the moment he had a couple of trees go over and they was too big for him to manage on his own with the tools he's got so he has actually got a team here at the moment removing those broken trees down once he does get back he is going to start work on those seals. But in the meantime, I'm going to clean this up inside. It's not actually bad. It was never bad when we got it inside. It was quite nice. But you can see in here it is quite messy. And I think that this will clean up really nicely and reasonably easy. So I'm going to crack on and get that done while I'm waiting for Chris. Right, little bit of a rethink here, guys. So I've just done all the glass. The inside of it is done. It's as nice as it can get. I've cleaned the glass. Some of it's gonna want doing again. I've got to clean up the dash. And well, I think you would agree, it looks 10 times better. So we have still got the seals to do. Sorry, the wind noise. Let me stand back a minute in the workshop. We have still got the seals to do on that van. But I rung the wheel guy earlier and he said, I'll be back there later, drop them off. And like Chris just said, Rob, we don't really want to leave that sitting where it is. The yard is on a little bit of a slope. Putting it on axle stands is quite dangerous. It is too heavy for the two post ramp. So what I'm actually going to do, he's just said to me, can I bring it now? And he'll ring me later on tonight and I can go and collect it. And then tomorrow morning, the wheels will all be done and we can get on with the seal. So... I'm gonna jump in it and go and drop it straight down the wheel shop. He was very, very fast there getting that done. So it's back already. I said to, I dropped it off there and Chris picked me up and I said to him, I've told the guy, don't do them alley wheel silver because that's all he ever does is alley wheels. And he said, well, I only really do silver, Rob. I'll tone it down with a bit of gray. Guys, let me know what you think in the comments section. I reckon they're absolutely bob on. You don't want them too bright like alloy silver, but are you happy with them, Chris? They do look nice. Smartened them right up. There is still some pitting in them, but look 10 times what they did. I 
I think you'd agree, guys, they look a lot better. So the only thing now on this van that looks sore is those seals. And it's a little tiny bit on the back there and a little bit on the front. And then this side, you've got that little bit in the middle and a bit on the front. But like Chris just said, you'll never be able to do just a patch and match it up. So you're going from this line here, Chris, yeah. all the way across the top. Yeah. And he's actually going to rub all that down, clean all that surface rust up and stone chip the lot and do it. A bit, bit of primer and then white stone chip so that it hasn't got a paint over it as well. Yeah, we'll probably touch a bit of uh, diamond white. A bit of diamond white over the top to take the oil off of it. Stone off the stone chip so yeah let's get it inside and get that done I just popped over to Kent Paints there to get some white paint, guys. And while I was gone, Chris has hammered out that whole side of it. When I say hammered it out, I mean he's knocked it out. He's rubbed it all down. He did say this was quite scabby here underneath the fuel flap. So he just he said regardless of if it's a little bit out, it's going to look so much better than what it does. Sorry, talking with my hands there. So he has done it all the way along. He said once he did clean all the grot off of this bit here, he noticed that it had quite a nasty dent in the uh, seal there itself. So he has put a little bit of filler in there and rubbed that down. So that side, I believe behind the door is all done as well. That's ready to go. Moving around to the other side. When I just got back, he's actually down there with the sander and he's doing that now. But this side, if you if you remember, I said earlier on in the video it is just that little bit there and a tiny bit on the back even though he'll have to scotch off i'm doing it again with my hands even though he's going to have to scotch off all of it there to paint the whole thing to make it match it's not going to be nowhere near as much work also just arrived from ebay 12 12 pound 99 i think this was let's try and get it out the new pot and as you can see that little clip there is not broken let's get the other one I'll show you what I mean. So if we put them side by side, you can see the clips are snapped out. And these are quite common to snap on these. I was just about to say, that hole in the middle there looks a lot smaller. But of course, that rubber seal in there is nowhere near as worn as that one. But yeah, we've got the nice new pot for it. All the clips are on there. Everything's there. So that'll make a nice job of that as well when we can actually shut that and get it to lock shut. So we'll continue on with this side and then start the process of the stone chip and paint. absolutely worked his magic there and it looks lovely i think you would agree that really really does look nice all the way across and we go round to the back sorry not the back the other side and you'll see he's done exactly the same all the way along there as well and it really does look at the difference that makes it really has smartened it right up. It's probably not going to be exact where he has had to blow that bit up. But if you go back in the video, that was quite sore there. It really was quite bad and patchy. So he's done that as well. 
Guys, while we are on the subject, I am going to give a little bit of an update on a couple of projects because they're just ones that people do always ask about. So the E-Class Mercedes, we have located 99% of the bits. I think we're just looking for a couple of headlights for it and then we'll be getting on with that one, no problem at all. And the one that sticks out the most Obviously the Fiesta you can see there's waiting to go to the paint shop. We need to grab a couple of headlights for it. And unfortunately the bumper's not really repairable. So we need to find one of those reasonably priced because they're so spiteful on the price. And the most important one, the Ford Focus 19,000 mile diesel that come out of a field. Now that car, I'm not going to lie to you guys, the reason there's been nothing on that car for quite some time is i mean this can happen to anyone we are very very careful and we do always put all the keys in one place and we take them out one at a time we actually lost the key for that focus it's been gone for quite some time now and why chris was doing that i said you know what mate i'm gonna have that all underneath the bench and i'm gonna have a good look for it now there's a key up there for the container I dropped that yesterday and I see it went straight under that cabinet. So I thought, well, I'm going to have a proper search through. I couldn't find it. So I moved over to my trolley and thought, I've got to sort it out. It is a mess. And I spun the trolley round, cleaned it all out. Chris was standing over that side. He said, I bet you I can find it. And even though I'd cleaned all that out, the key was sitting behind there. So I've got the key for it now. And I am going to get on with that and finish the last little niggly bits that I'm going to do off camera. And then once that's done, I will advertise it on Instagram. So many people already sent me their number for that car. Guys, we don't work like that. It won't be for sale until I put it on there for sale, just to give everyone a chance. But yeah, look at that. We'll get it unmasked in a minute and have a look what the uh, paint match is like. But it's going to be a little bit out. Just pulled it outside, guys. It is a little bit bright, but look at that finished. Look at that seal now. It looks so much different. Chris even touched up all those little rust spots that was up there, little surface rusts. And he even went round and done a few other little ones. I've just chucked a bit of bumper gel round it and round the tyres. Don't forget what I said early in the video. Everything we used, like bumper gel, etc., etc. I'm going to link all of it in the description this time. The mop, everything's... I'm going to try not to forget. I will. I won't forget. I will put it in there. But there it is, all done and finished. I'm not sure if I showed it yesterday after I cleaned all the glass. That really made a big difference to it as well. Round the back, we didn't actually touch it. And again, down this side, it just looks so neat and tidy now. I think those wheels really did finish it off. But yeah, all in now. got the jack and the cover to put back in just looks brilliant right it is that time hopefully one of you guys are going to own this let's go inside and crunch the numbers so guys the most important bit but just before we do carry on with this huge thank you again to comline for sponsoring this uh this build doing the service kit for it and guys don't forget to check out their socials they're doing a uh, giveaway over christmas you, if you haven't seen Comline before, you probably have. They support the Porsche Carrera Cup. So you'll see if you follow Motorsport, their Porsche Carrera Cup going around. So thank you very much. So the purchase price of that van. Obviously, we bought the first one and then we bought a job lot. But we've worked it out as we've been going through. And we put that one down as £3,000. So that one wasn't the cheapest really but for what it is but we think that there was still a profit in it and the way we worked it out we've done well out the others anyway the train fare as you know was 55 pound now the fuel for that truck uh, that van i actually it was right in the middle of the fuel shortage just a couple of days in where there was no fuel so i actually reached out to john and the van was stored at his brother-in-law's and I said, would he go out and get me some fuel? I'll make it worth his while because there's no fuel down here and I can't take a can of fuel up there even if there was on the train. So he actually went out with five cans or six cans 
and he got me 50 pounds worth of diesel and I gave him a hundred pound when I got there and I thought that was fair. He's done a bit of running around there to get me that fuel and it got me home. So we got hundred pound there for fuel. Now the interesting bit, this was the adventure. We got MOT, we got the pipe, little drink for that guy, a drink for the other guy. I've just sort of totaled it all together. So the, the tools that I bought, the pipe, and giving those guys a drink, etc. I've put 150 down. Hotel, I stayed out that night. It was 90 pound. I can't remember how much the dinner was. Um, service kit, obviously, was free of charge. The stone chip was 20 pound. Primer and the white paint this morning from Kemp Paints was 27 pound. Oil, 25 pound. The fuel bucket that I got off of eBay, I know I said earlier it was 12 pound, it was actually 11 pound. Uh, one new tire because it was out of shape, but you can, the, the spare tire was the original tire off of that van and it had got a flat tire and they'd put the spare on and it was out of shape. So one new tire, 50 pound, and obviously got the puncture fixed. Uh, wash, I got that done while I was up there as well, that was 20 quid. So we've got a total of £3,548. Now, I know a lot of you have said to me, are you going to turn that into a camper? Guys, me and Chris have got enough projects on. That's quite a... It needs a lot of reconfiguring, and it's not something that we want to get involved in. I have looked online, and they have a fantastic value as what they are. So you could take out a row of those seats, and somebody could quite easily get their motocross bike in there. It's got a toilet. It's got running hot water. It's got everything you're gonna need as a day van anyway. And if you do wanna turn it into a full-blown camper, it would be quite nice to have the bed up the top so you can keep pretty much everything you got. So we are gonna sell it and we are gonna ask 5,500 on near offer, which is gonna give us a pre-tax profit of 1,952 pounds. And you can't grizzle at that. We knew that we was gonna make a profit out of it. I didn't think it was gonna be quite that much. And don't forget, if we do come down in price, if there's no interest in it, which I think it's gonna go for what we're asking. But if we do have to reduce the price, of course that reduces our profit. So that is gonna be the end of the series on the Transit Welfare Unit. I'm gonna put it on Instagram tomorrow night. So if you are interested, when I'll put it on there, reach out and please include your mobile phone number so that I can give you a call in the order that they come in. If you did enjoy the video, hit that thumbs up, like, subscribe and share. And don't forget to follow us on Instagram for the little sneak peeks at Selvage Rebuilds. Check out the merchandise, the link is in the description. We'll see you all very, very soon in the next one.